Hi, this is Pedia at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and today's tutorial is going to be on how to set your model up for character customization. So let's just open up Unity. Now originally when I was getting ready to do this uh, demonstration, I was going to take a model that I already had custom built for a different game that I had and show how I went ahead and you know made the modifications that I wanted inside of a 3D modeling program. But there's just so many different 3D modeling programs and the way you do things in them are just a little bit different. And if you already know how to 3D model and rig a character, I could easily demonstrate it in Unity and you could take that knowledge and you know apply it to the 3D modeling program you're using. And also if you don't know how to 3D model, you can also do this in Unity as well. So I've created a little scene. It's a demo scene. Uh, let's go zoom in on the character. And I'm just using the uh, the humanoid character that Gamer Dad donated, and I just kind of wanted to open it up and just go over what's in it. So here's our character. It has an armature and some applications that might be called a skeleton, or it's basically the bones or how it's constructed. So we look. It's got a couple points here. We'll notice, you know, on the hands. You know, it's got the heel, it's got a hierarchy you can go through, and if they're properly labeled well, you'll be able to you know, see where all these bones are connected. And then this here meshes the actual player. I'm just going to quickly rename that. And this mesh is actually the shield, so I'm just going to quickly rename that as well. And then we also have the the axe that's included. Now I'm just mostly going to focus on the accessories that come with the character. So his shield, his axe. Uh, let's start off with the axe. You'll notice that you can't move it anywhere. It's pretty much glued to your character. So let's say you know your character starts with an axe, and later on you can get a sword and whatnot, and maybe a spear. You know different type, different style of weapons. You're going to want different meshes for your weapons. So you can model them all attached to your character like this and just simply turn them all off when the character starts in Unity and then just turn on the one that you actually want your character to have. But as your game progresses and you start deciding that you want to add more you know, meshes or different models for weapons, it can become quite cumbersome to have all these here all the time. So the way I generally like to do it is I'm going to delete the shield, or at least I'll delete the axe for now. I'm not going to be using that. So I'm just going to get rid of it. And then I've gone ahead and I have an axe I'm going to be using. And let's also do a sword. Now these are from a different package, so they're not even set up to scale or anything with this model. But if you're buying assets from a third party site, chances are your stuff is going to be set to scale or work nicely with each other. So we'll address some of that in this tutorial here. So I'm just going to go in and reset everything, make sure it's all zeroed out. Then I'm going to zoom in on them. And the first thing you'll notice, I am going to move the axe over a little bit. Uh, the player, when he holds his sword, you know, his hand's going to be here. Now, I like to have my items lined up with where they're going to hold it on the same uh, same spot on each item so I'm gonna want my players hand right about here on the axe so I would actually load both these items up in my 3d modeling program and I would adjust uh, my axe like basically just lay them out in your 3d modeling program all the weapons that you're gonna have and just make sure that they're all aligned with where you want your player to hold them then just save them back out it's not that hard to do it should, it should be able to do it pretty quickly and let's just get rid of these now and then I'm going to go to my player and I'm going to create a spot where I want these items to be equipped so for my game all my characters are going to be right handed and that's where their weapons going to be now generally I'll load the character up into blender or whatever 3d modeling program you have and add an extra bone where I want it, the stuff to be attached but if you're not a 3D modeler and you don't know how to do that, you can do the same thing by using a game object. And I'm going to rename this and call it right hand 
weapon. They spell it right. Mount. Then I'm just going to take this and drag it and drop it onto the right hand. And then I'm going to want to zero that out. So there it is right there. Now I'm simply just going to take it and position it to where I want the weapons to be equipped. So I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, pretty close. So right about there. Maybe a little bit forward in the hand. Yeah, that's good enough for now. So after I'm done that, I'm going to start taking my weapons. Now I'm just going to take one for now. Let's just take the sword. And I'll drop it into my scene. Make sure it's zeroed out again. And I'm just going to drop it onto that mount so it's parented. And of course, uh, actually I'm going to have to zero it out again. And I'll notice that it's, it's not right. It's, it looks to be about exactly 90 degrees off. So I'm just going to unparent it. I'm going to take my mount and in Unity I'm just going to rotate, rotate it 90 degrees. Take my sword, drop it back on again, and zero everything out. And there we go. Now you might want to fidget with where your mount point is exactly. Now, I'm obviously going to want to scale the sword so it looks a little more realistic for him. Now, it's actually bigger than his hand. And if you notice, when you start your game, it automatically flows with the animation. So if we went and switched the animation on the player, uh, that's combat stance. Let's take him and do act slash, so an action attack. And we start it up. And we'll see that it, you know the sword is performing the way it's supposed to during that animation. Now, if we went ahead and actually took the axe and put it out into our 3D modeling program to adjust, uh, there's certain ways to do it. Some could be just as simple as adjusting a pivot point. Uh, depending on the 3D modeling program you're using, it's a little bit different for each one. But if we adjusted where the hand is going to be on the axe, it should just be as simple as dragging the axe onto the weapon mount, hitting reset, and we'll turn the sword off for now. And there we go. Now remember, we did have to go in and adjust where he holds the axe. Whoops, that's the uh, sword. We want to move the axe up a bit. And of course, when you start it up, there he goes. Now, you can do the exact same thing with the shield. So we're just going to go over, delete the shield. I'm going to create a new game object. And I'm going to call this left hand shield mount. I'll take that and just drag it onto my left hand. Make sure I have it selected. Reset it. And then positioned where I want it to be on the shield as well. So maybe about there. I'm going to take my shield, drop it into the scene. I just kind of want to see where the center of it is. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. I only have one shield loaded up, so there's not going to be a lot of them I have to fidget with to get exact. I'm just going to drag it onto my character and then reset it. And then go look at it. Now, that's not exactly how I want it. It's too low and the rotation isn't right. So I'll take this pivot point well, I find it easier if you take the shield off. Uh, the center of the, the mount is going to be different with when you have things attached to it if you're trying to fidget with it. And I know I'm going to want to rotate it this way. So 90 degrees. And I want to move it up. So it would be about there. So let's take my shield, attach that again. Zero out my shield. Uh, that's pretty close. We're probably still going to want it up a bit more and definitely in more. So yet again, unattach. So we want the point to be in the arm. So probably about there. And reset. 
that looks good so we'll start it up and there we go so now I just have to make sure that the center of all my shields is lined up with this shield so I can load this shield up into all my 3d modeling programs and use it as my base and when I go to switch them they should all just line up perfectly now I've got a few other things here like a hat I think you pretty much get the point though you take your hats all the different hats or helmets that you have you make sure that you have their center all lined up on them you'd come over to your character's armature and then on the top of his head you'd want to put another empty game object or better yet in the actual armature of your character and make sure that everything's lined up perfectly that way now some people might wonder you know why would you want to do it in the armature and it's just kind of nice because it's really easy to animate let's say you have a backpack say your character's running or riding a horse or something uh, as part of your animation you could have the bone move up and down giving a impression that your backpack's bouncing or your hat or anything like that and you actually might be able to do that in unity let me just take a look here actually you can do that in unity as well you can actually add that animation since you have access to it now there are a couple ways to keep these items organized if you don't have that many weapons let's say you had a an axe a sword and a let's say a spear you could just turn around and put all three there and then later on when you create your script i have your script go through and grab each one and then just turn on the model of the one you actually want to be looking at so if they have a sword you just turn the sword on and whatnot but let's say you're pretty ambitious and you have about 30 different models for weapons uh, one way is just to create a bunch of prefabs for them and you could have some script that holds all those prefabs and just actually equips the right one it's going to instantiate it on that well it's going to instantiate in the game world and quickly move it over to your weapon mount or a better way that we'll get into is a little later on is uh, resources.load and that basically just involves creating a resources folder down here and then you can build some sort of hierarchy uh, of folders in there and you can just drop all your 3d models in there and textures and whatnot and just have them load up whatever you need so it, it saves having to have a script that has you know an array of 30 different things uh, for instance let's take a look at our mobs scenes we'll go back to level one and our mob spawner where was it mob generator so already we've got three here and well the spawn points will be the same we can have it run around and find the spawn points but for our mob prefabs we've already got three and you know you're probably going to have a, a hell of a lot more than three different types of mobs in your game so this list can get pretty long and if you accidentally screw something up and you lose connection to all these prefabs you'd have to go through and drag them all in again it, it's just much easier to be able to throw them in to a resource load folder and just tell it which one to load up automatically and you can use a special naming convention on them so it knows what mobs to load up now for different hairstyles it's you know it's going to be treated the exact same way as your hat you have your little mount spot and you would just attach the hair to it and of course you could have you know 50 different hairstyles and they all attach to the exact same uh, mount spot but anyway that should be enough to get you started on when you're creating your assets for your game to keep in mind how we're going to be using the customization system and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.